Hi guys, um, we're about to uh, start our new project here <coughs> and we're going to call this one the chop phase inverter. Um, we're going to be using one or a couple of these motors from these compressors which I can get ample of. Um, you'll see here two different sized rotors. Uh, this one here is our 35 amp one. 12 volts 35 amps and the larger one here is 12 volts 45 amps so um, this used to actually drive two compressor heads one at each end whereas the small one only drives the one compressor head uh, my employer imports these from China by the hundreds and every now and then um, you will get some that do not work the customers return them and these simply get thrown out because it's cheaper to throw them out than it is to send them back to China for warranty. Um, nine times out of ten, it's this little switch here that is uh, the um, cause of the problems. Um, we have a unit that draws 35 amps and the switch they've decided to put in here is rated at 10 amps. So you can imagine what happens to that when this is pumping up four large tyres and is running for some time under load. Uh, with this one, that part of it's fine. What's happened in this case is the pump here, or the air comes out here, simply does not pump any air. So I'm guessing one of the valves or something there is broken off on the uh, reed plate. Um, <coughs> So had a look in the warehouse today and we found three of them. So uh, they are three of the same size, which makes our job a little easier. So um, we have ample parts for the project. Um, so we're going to be using these smaller ones. And um, hopefully we will find that uh, we can make something um, that is worth something, maybe of use. Current draw is a little high for my liking, so I'm actually going to um, unwind all this wire and I'm going to rewind this. But first, we have to modify our rotor. So um, I'll clean this rotor up, get all the wire off it. Well, I won't clean this one up. This was for another uh, test project, um, which was the same as this test project. And that is something we might get onto a little later. So um, what I'm going to do is this uh, rotor is all good. Commutator is still quite well. It's done very little work, as you can see. The brushes haven't even started touching, um, or haven't yet made full contact. Not even bed in. So I would suggest that this is one like this, straight out of the box. It didn't work. Um, China's quality control. So we're going to use this one um, and I'm going to unwind it and like I said wind it with some finer wire but uh, make our modifications first. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and I'm going to um, remove all our wire and uh, we're going to re rewind it uh, with some finer wire but more turns. So hopefully we can use a little less current. Of course we'll have a little less power, but um, things about get as hot. And as this is only a uh, test model to see what happens, see if we can make it work. Um, no need to go up in big uh, power outputs as far as this little setup would go. All right, so I'll be back once I've um, unwound all the wire, made the modifications we're going to need and um, we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so there's all our wire from our um, rotor and I have to tell you this would have to be the worst wound rotor I've ever seen. I guess um, the guys that work for this company, or girls, that um, wind these um, rotors mustn't be able to count. So um, each um, rotor segment, uh, the wire is wrapped around five of our rotor poles. 
um, and then another coil one step over around another five. Now some of them had five wraps, some had four, one had three, one had six. There was just absolutely no uniform whatsoever. So an absolute terrible, terrible El Cheapo um, motor. And I can't even count the number of wines on each bloody set of um, each set of rotor cores. So uh, <coughs> yes, wrapped um, all over the place. So like I said, some had five wraps. The next coil might have had four wraps. The next one had three wraps, and then another four, and then another five, and one had six. Just absolutely shocking. No quality control whatsoever. So, um, when people think they're getting a uh, nice, cheap compressor, you most certainly are. Um, I've also took, taken the um, armature off um, another one. And this is going to be going on this end. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't fit between our uh, bearing retainer clip and our um, core former, plastic protective core former. So I'm going to have to take this core former off. Um, slide it out of there and take about five laminates off our rotor. Put it back together so we can fit our um, armature back in there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, then we're going to need some wire. I'm going down in wire size, but I'm going up in turns. So um, it'll be going to be about eight turns each, eight to ten. Haven't decided yet, and um, I don't have any wire ready on spools. So I'm actually going to have to reclaim some. It is going to come from this. And this wire is 0.6mm. So we're going from 1mm wire down to 0.6mm um, with more turns. So that should drop our current draw. Um, of course it'll drop the uh, power as well. But um, I'm thinking this motor is uh, going to be a lot more efficient because we're going to put um, the same amount of turns on each segment of our rotor instead of willy-nilly whatever you can be bothered putting on there. Um, so that's going to be my next job. Uh, I'm going to uh, leave this video at that. So um, Actually I'll go ahead and I'll strip this down and get our other armature segment on. We'll come back and have a look at the finished product. Um, then it's going to take me a while to get this wire off here. Um, we'll be back for the next video when I've got the wire and how we're going to wind it. Well, I ended up taking eight off because these are actually uh, thinner than I thought they would be, which is actually good. And they seem to be uh, well covered in um, varnish or whatever to insulate them all from one another. So, um, probably one step in the right direction using nice thin plates. Well insulated. Um, now we have both of our um, armature segments on there and um, we're pretty much well ready to rewind this thing. And um, when I've put this in I've just basically kept each segment in line with the one on the other end. <coughs> Doesn't really matter because these brushes here we're going to be able to uh, time as long as, as well as these ones here. Now the other thing I wanted to point out that is quite important as every second segment is going to be um, not connected uh, so we can get a break uh, between power on, power off and pulse the coils properly is the brushes will need to be no wider than each commutator segment and uh, we are lucky in this case because the brushes are actually slightly narrower than each segment. So um, the standard brushes for these motors will do just fine. Uh, so our next job is to uh, wind the uh, rotor. And like I said, that'll be the next video. Um, because I have to uh, spend a fair bit of time unwinding this now. Our three-phase motor from our smart drive. 
um, washing machine. And uh, I know a lot are going to say, oh no, don't wreck it, but um, here these are plentiful. Every throw out day I can get five to ten of these, no problem at all. Um, I still have another two in stock if we ever shall need to use them. But um, at the moment this is our project, so we're going to use what we've got. And uh, so far it has cost me nothing but time. Some will be uh, fortunate like myself to be able to uh, pick up some of these once old compressors that don't work no longer and wire for nothing but um, others um, of course are going to have to spend a bit of their cash like I have done in the past but so far this is a freebie project alright so we'll see you next video when we uh, wind our rotor and um, start to put the rest of it together